we need to find the interval of convergence for the following power series. Uh, its general term is negative 1 to the power n times x minus 1 to the power n over 2n minus 1 times 2 to the power n. And n goes from 1 to infinity. We start by applying the ratio test. So that means that we need to find the following limit. Limit as n approaches infinity. And then we take absolute value of the ratio, where in the numerator we place a sub n plus 1 term of the series. That means that every n I'm replacing with n plus 1 times x to the power n plus 1 over 2. I have to be careful here. So that n I'm replacing with n plus 1. So it's going to be 2 times, and I have to use another set of parentheses, 2 times n plus 1. And then I write minus 2 close the parentheses, and then 2 to the power n plus 1. That's the numerator. In the denominator, we just put a, a sub nth term. Okay. Next, I'm going to simplify this expression inside the absolute value and that complex fraction I will rewrite as the product. So I'm going to take fraction from the numerator. Oh, and then as I go, I will simplify this expression. So I will be distributing 2. It's going to be 2n plus 2 and then minus 1. So it's 2n and then positive 2 minus 1. It's 1 plus 1. Um, that's that. And then 2 to the power n plus 1. That's the numerator. And then I will be multiplying that by the reciprocal of the denominator. So I have to flip this expression, which means that, I'll just continue, 2n minus 1 gets to the numerator. 2 to the power n is right next to it. And that I put in the denominator. Negative 1 to the power n, um, x minus 1 to the power n. Now, as I look at this, um, I see that some factors can be canceled. So first, I can apply absolute value to negative 1 with its power. So no matter what sign it has, as I apply absolute value, it becomes positive, And positive 1 basically disappears. So I can just cross this out. And same happens with this negative 1 to the power n. Absolute value of that will be just 1 to the power n, which is 1. So that goes away. Now what else? 2 to the power n plus 1 I can write as 2 to the power n times 2 to the power 1 or just 2. So that means that 2 to the power n and 2 to the power n here on the bottom will cancel and I only have 2. And what else? Okay, let me start rewriting. Limit n approaches infinity absolute value. Um, now, what else I can notice is that in the numerator, I have x minus 1 to the power n plus 1, and then x minus 1 to the power n. So, bases are the same. So, it means that I can combine those bases by subtracting their powers. So, power n plus 1 and power n, those two I can subtract. Now, n plus 1 minus n gives me power 1, so I will only get expression x minus 1 in the numerator. Uh, we also have 2n minus 1 in the numerator and 2n plus 1 in the denominator. And I also have this constant 2 right here, 2. That's all we can simplify. And now we can take this limit. So as n approaches infinity, what happens to this expression? Keep in mind that the variable here is n, so everything else would treat as constants. It means that x minus 1 would treat as a constant. It's not being affected by this limit. So if I look at everything that involves n, I then I'll see that the numerator and the denominator have same degrees, degree 1, degree 1. And when that happens, we know that the limit equals just to the ratio of the leading coefficients. So I'll get absolute value, 
x minus 1 and then times the leading coefficient of the expression in the numerator over that constant 2 that I had in front of the parentheses times the leading coefficient of the expression. So times another 2, like that. And of course, I can divide out 2. So if I simplify all that, I'll get the following. Now in the denominator is just 2, so if I apply absolute value to that, it's going to be 2. In the numerator, I will keep the absolute value, so it's going to be absolute value of x minus 1, like that. That's the result of the limit. And remember, we were applying the ratio test. So according to the ratio test, um, the given series converges if this limit is less than 1. So that's the condition under which the given series converges. Let's rewrite it a little bit. So um, what I can do here, um, I can remove those two from the denominator by multiplying each side by two. So that's how I can rewrite it. Absolute value of x minus 1 is less than, so I multiply by 2 here and here, and I get less than 2. Okay, here it is. So we know that on this interval, um, our series is going to be convergent. Now, what is this interval? Let's actually expand it so it makes a little bit more sense. Now, the absolute value inequality with the less sign, we rewrite as the double inequality. So I put x minus 1 in the middle, then I put less than 2 on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, so it's negative 2 and then less sign. So in other words, x minus 1 is between negative 2 and 2. And then to obtain the interval itself, or we'll have to isolate x, so for that I will add 1 to each part of this double inequality, so it's x in between the numbers negative 2 plus 1, negative 1, and then 2 plus 1, that's 3. So based on the ratio test, our power series converges when x values are between negative 1 and 3. But we also know that ratio test fails at the endpoints. So ratio test does not tell us anything about the endpoints, that means negative 1 and 3. So to know whether our power series converges at negative 1 and 3, we have to test them separately. Let's start by testing the left endpoint. So let x be equal to negative 1. And to find whether the series converges or diverges at negative 1, we have to plug in x equals negative 1 into the original series right here. Um, right here for x. And find a test to determine whether it's converges or diverges. Let's see how it's going to look like. n goes from 1 to infinity. I have negative 1 to the power n. Now here I'm plugging in negative 1, right? So it's negative 1 minus 1 to the power n, that's where I placed it, over 2n minus 1 to the power 2n, like that. Um, after that, we need to simplify everything. So let's see what can be simplified. Well, of course, we'll, we'll combine negative 1 and negative 1 here. So that's negative 1 to the power n, negative 2 to the power n over 2n minus 1 times 2 to the power n. We want to simplify everything as much as we can. And I can see that in the numerator I have negative 2 to the power n, and in the denominator I have 2 to the power n. It would be nice to cancel them, but I can't do that right now because bases are different. So if I want to create same bases, I have to separate negative 1 from negative 2. So that's how I think about it. I'll make a note here. So negative 2 to the power n, it's the same as negative 1 times 2 to the power n, right? But we know that according to the law of exponents, if we have a product raised to the power, we can apply that power to each factor. So it's same as negative 1 to the power n times 2 to the power n. And that's what I'm going to do right now. That's how I will rewrite a negative 2 to the power n. Let's see. Um, I have negative 1 to the power n. Now negative 2 to the power n, I'm rewriting this way as I just explained. So it means that I'll have another negative 1 to the power n 
times 2 to the power n over 2n minus 1 times 2 to the power n. Okay, so here it is. I can divide out to the power n. That's gone. Now, as I combine those two, they have same powers. They can be combined under the same power, right? And as I multiply negative 1 by negative 1, it's going to be a positive 1 to the power n. But then positive 1 to any power is still 1, so I don't even have to write it. Well, no, I guess I have to write it because I don't really have anything left in the numerator. So, yeah, it's going to be 1 in the numerator. And then 2n minus 1 in the denominator. Here it is. We, we obtained this kind of series, and now we have to test it. Well, I can see that for any value of n from 1 to infinity, I will always get positive terms. And since terms are positive, it means that we can try comparison tests. So we have options, either basic comparison test or limit comparison test. Well, let's, let's try basic comparison test. So this general term, 1 over 2n minus 1, I can compare to what? Remember, we want to keep either the same numerator or denominator. Well, since it's only 1 in the, denom in the numerator, I'll keep it the same for the right-hand side general term. But the denominator I'll use is 2n, because I can easily compare those two. Now, let's compare them. When I compare the denominators, I can see that the one on the left is smaller than the one on the right. Well, because I have to subtract one, right? So it means that it's one less. So this one is smaller, this one is larger. Well, if the same number is being divided by something smaller here and by something larger over here, that means that I'll have to use greater than or equal to sign, right? Okay, so I'm able to compare, compare the general term, term of my series with general term of another series. But the question is, what is that series? Um, can we say anything about it? Well, we can. So first of all, coefficient 1 half, constant 1 half, I can put outside so it's out of the way and it's not confusing me. And without 1 half in the front, that's how the series looks like, or that's how the general term looks like. What is that series? Well, that's the P series, right? That's P series. Remember when it has the form 1 over n to the power? That's the P series. What is the power? The power is 1. And we know that for the P series, when the power is less than or equal to 1, so our case is equal to 1, the series diverges. Diverges. Okay. So we found that this series diverges. That's not our series, by the way, right? So we have to finish the comparison test. This series diverges. Now, what can we say about our series? And this is its general term. Well, since this series diverges, it means that its sum is infinity. Um, and terms of this series are smaller than terms of our series. That means that our series has to diverge as well. So if adding up smaller terms gives us infinity, then adding up larger terms would definitely be infinity. So we'll say this series diverges by the comparison. It says comparison by the comparison test. And what does that mean for, for us, for our original problem? Well, it means that this endpoint x equals negative 1, the left-hand side endpoint, will not be included in the interval of convergence. So here it is. It's not going to be included. I can already write the interval in this form from negative 1, 2, and then I'll put 3. The question is, do I put a bracket here or a parenthesis as well? That's where we need to test that endpoint. So let x be equal to 3 and see what happens. Let x be equal to 3. So let's plug in 3 into our series. That's where we're going to place it. So, and it goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the power n. Then I'm replacing x with 3, so I'll get 3 minus 1 to the power n over 2n minus 1 times 2 to the power n. Okay, that's where we placed 3. Let's simplify negative 1 to the power n, 3 minus 1 gives me 2, so it's 2 to the power n over 2n minus 1, 
times 2 to the power n. Now here right away I can divide out the power n and that's the resulting series for which I need to determine whether it's diverges or converges. I give 1 to the power n over 2n minus 1. Now what kind of series is this? Well the fact that we still have negative 1 to the power n present makes us realize that that is the alternating series. And that means that we'll have to apply the alternating series test. So with the alternating series test, first we obtain the absolute value of the general term. So we call it B sub n, the absolute value of the general term. And that's, well, absolute value of that negative 1 to the power n. Numerator is just 1, and then 2n minus 1. Here I can drop the absolute value since um, that expression stays always positive for values of n from 1 to infinity. And the first condition is to verify that b sub n plus 1 term is always less than or equal to b sub n for all n. Let's obtain b sub n plus 1 term. It's going to be 1 over 2 times, and then I am replacing n with n plus 1. So I'm using parentheses and then minus 1. Uh, that has to be less than or equal to 1 over 2n minus 1. So I'll simplify the denominator here. 1 over 2n, 2n plus 2, but then minus 1, plus 2 minus 1 is positive 1. Less than or equal to 1 over 2n minus 1. And now by looking at the structure of each expression on the left and on the right, um, I can see that I can compare them. So here in the denominator I have 2n plus 1 and here I have 2n minus 1. So obviously this denominator is larger than the one on the right. Since this denominator is larger, it means that the overall quantity is smaller. That's how we see that yes, this is true for all n. So we can see that this condition is, is satisfied. And the second condition is to check if the limit of b sub n is n goes to infinity equals 0. So that's going to be a limit as an approaches infinity b sub n 1 over 2n minus 1. And I can see as the denominator gets infinitely large, this expression gets infinitely small, so it approaches 0. That limit equals 0. So second condition is also satisfied. And since both conditions are satisfied, this series converges by the alternating series test. So since the series converges, and what is that series? Well, that's the one when we let x be equal 3, right? So when x equals 3, we get convergent series. And that means that 3 has to be included in the interval of convergence. So I'm going to go back to my first page here where I left off. And now I see that 3 has to be included. So I'm going to use bracket here and I will put less than or equal to sign on the right hand side. So that is interval of convergence. Um, what I can also add to my answer is the radius of convergence. The radius of convergence can be easily found by looking at this line. So 2 is the radius of convergence and then 1 is the center. So center radius. If you construct this interval you'll see the same thing. So if I have negative 1 here, uh, then it's what? 0, 1, 2, 3. Here's that interval from negative 1 to 3, right? Well, we can see how center is 1 and the radius is 2. So that's how we find the interval of convergence for the given example.